Brought to you by Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder and InspiredDisorder.com slash Kindle. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. The Last Man on Earth TV show that uh, I tried to get into when it first came out, starring Will Forte uh, and Kristen Schaal. Uh, back in, uh, I don't know when this, this show started, what, 2015 maybe? twenty Yeah, 2015. Uh, I watched the first episode, just wasn't into it. Not a huge Will Forte fan. He tends to be the same kind of guy in everything. Just the way he speaks sounds kind of like a cartoon character. And uh, I don't know. There's just something about him that I'm not the hugest fan. And then you, you get this show where for some reason he plays the lead, The Last Man on Earth. But he is by far one of the most unlikable lead characters in a show. Um, At no point, it it took a long time for me to warm up to uh, this show in general, let alone his character. Because every every opportunity he's given to, to make the wrong decision, he makes the wrong decision. And it's for nothing more than selfish reasons that he he makes the wrong decision. And it's just painful to watch. Painful to watch. But the premise of the show is fun. Because especially nowadays, during the coronavirus, during a uh, pandemic, uh, the premise of the show is that humanity dies off because of a virus that happens in 2022, I believe. Um so very, very poignant, very of the time that a virus would uh, wipe out eventually uh, most of the people. And it has that thing kind of like Zombieland where you have a lot of fun locations. It starts off season one, they're in Tucson. Uh, but then, you know, different different things happen. Will Forte, you know, meets somebody. He's not the only person around. Uh, so, you know, there's kind of this weird, and Kristen Skull, she's great. She's great. I, I really, she's probably my favorite. Her and Todd are probably my two favorite characters in this whole, whole show. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the first season, you know, you find out that he's not the last man on earth and it turns into almost like this comedy soap opera where, you know, the thing with soap operas, they're so incestuous that, like, everybody ends up sleeping with everybody, and there's, like, a lot of, like, interpersonal kind of drama that happens, very high school drama-esque. So there's there's kind of that plays out a lot in the first season. Um, and then eventually, Will Forte, because of his lying, constant lying, he ends up getting banished from the town, uh, and Christian Kristen Skull ends up going, Carol ends up going with him, uh, which that was fun. When when they got kicked out of Tucson and then it was just basically just them in an RV kind of traveling around, I was kind of hoping that that's where... I, I was kind of hoping that we weren't going to go back to all of the people that were left in that society because it was just... I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that it was turning into like a little soap opera and that it was just going to be about, you know, personal drama as opposed to kind of what it's like to exist in a post-apocalyptic kind of world. Um, but eventually they do, they do get back. Uh, but everything changes. Like that's one thing that I did enjoy that the locations did change eventually. Uh, like they go from Tucson uh, you have that little road trip kind of thing where Will, Will Forte and, and Kristen are are on their own. Um, and then they go to, what was it like Miami or something like that? And then they go, oh no, they go to Malibu. That's right, they go to Malibu. Um, so then it, it goes from like this uh, really kind of uh, like gated community kind of thing out in Tucson to just this uh, Malibu mansion on top of a hill. Uh, which was interesting because then you also see the characters start to wear uh, like just designer clothing and it really gets like it really gets a different look to it. They're living in this like luxurious mansion on top of a hill in Malibu, uh, just gorgeous. Um, and then from there they move. Are they going up? I forget. There's like there's this whole drama that happens. And then so there's like 
people on the ground, right? This little community of people, and they go from Tucson to Malibu, and then they they end up having to leave because this character comes back, who's kind of this crazy guy. But there's also Will Forte's brother is a uh, astronaut, so there's kind of this duality of like being the last man on Earth, but also you know being the last man in space and kind of uh, his journey. It's kind of a weird, like the whole storyline for his brother is like if he, if like it felt like it should have been more important than it was because once he ends up getting back to land, I mean he 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 runs into the the crazy boat guy that comes back and and is kind of the reason they have to leave again. But, like, his brother shows up, and his brother ends up being just as much of an asshole as Will Forte. Like, he's just as unlikable. Um, kind of like douchebag, kind of uh, just jock, meathead, kind of uh, annoying person. Um, it's just, I don't know. It, it's so weird how, like, how... So consistently, the show is giving me characters that I just do not care about. Um, and then also the actors, not a big fan of January Jones, just kind of a flat. She she finally does get an arc. Here's the thing. After season one, season two, they were okay. Like, I'm powering through it. I'm like, I'm hoping this gets better. Um, and then season three happens, and I'm like... Oh, here we go. Because the end of season two, like every season ends on a cliffhanger. And season two is like this crazy boat guy comes back and he's going to attack them. Uh, they get like invaded uh, at their Malibu mansion and they have to leave, uh, which introduces a new character. You finally get an Asian dude instead of the only other diversity in this in this show was uh, a black dude who was very much like the way he acted. I don't know the dude's name. Um, but his acting style felt so much like a soap opera. Just like he, he's just like a beautiful face that's saying words, you know. And then he knows stuff. Like he was, he was like the the really the smartest guy in the group who was able to build stuff and fix things and and kind of make uh, society work again. Um, which kind of like sad that they relegated the only minority to having that kind of a job, which I guess is real because, you know, the structure of our country is really built on the backs of minorities. Um, so I guess there there is some relatability or some connective tissue there. Uh, but in season three, you get an Asian dude who's also really smart and is also, like, immediately calls out how full of shit Will Forte's character is. Just immediately, it's like, because Will Forte does this thing where he, like, just has these overly complex explanations for his lies, to just cover up his lies. Um, and and the dude just, like, flat out calls him out, calls out his bullshit, which I, I thought it was a breath of fresh air, season three. Uh, just getting kind of a little bit more flavors of characters in there. There's also, like, this random black kid shows up. Um, which is, that's kind of weird. He's that you want to talk about a wasted character. Like during season four, that character literally just disappears. They have like, uh, they kind of write the fact that, oh, he's out on his own or whatever, but he doesn't really say anything. He's very much of a, a, just a, just a nothing character. And I don't know why they put him in the show, but you know, it, but season three, probably my favorite season of the show. I think it, it, it pays off kind of a lot of the frustrations that I had from season one and season two. Um, and even the place they live where they're like in this kind of self-sustaining, uh, you know, startup kind of uh, business building where each floor, they each each have a different floor. And that's kind of one of my, almost one of my dreams to have like a big open space like that where even having like a, a smaller, just like a, a shed or a cabin inside that 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 giant open space to like live inside the little cabin and then you go out outside of the cabin and you're still inside the giant workspace and then I could you know paint and produce podcasts and all that kind of stuff so like the just seeing kind of what that would look like uh, was really cool and then season four they kind of move on and it's it's you know it takes them to even crazier places because you know the there's the uh, the nuclear power plants are starting to go bad, so they need to get out of the U.S. They're trying to go to Mexico, but they can't just drive there. So they have to take a yacht. 
and they run into this other side character that shows up. And season four is good too. Like season three, I enjoyed. Season four it was good. And then the lead up to season four, it just ends. There's, of course, a cliffhanger at the end of season four. Like there's a cliffhanger at the end of every season to kind of like kickstart Ooh, what's going to happen next season. But it ends. They canceled the show. So ultimately, I was very angry that I wasted because it was a it was an OK show, but it wasn't good enough to where you, you can just cut the show off without any kind of resolution. And I'm going to be happy with it like they should have somebody should have like at least paid them to do a, like a movie. Give them a 90 minute movie. Have them wrap it up in some way. I read interviews where they were going to go in season five with because in season four, like this whole underground community comes out. Um, and I read what they were going to do with the story, which is interesting. But they also said he had no plans for how this story was going to end. It was just going to keep going. So I don't know. It was super disappointing. Season four, uh, the end of season four. And it was kind of it was kind of getting old anyway. A lot of the stuff. It was a lot of the same things, but I did over time finally enjoy Will Forte's character. Um, I think the character grows a bit more and and is less annoying to to follow on the show. But overall, interesting show. I, it could have been done a lot better, and it should have been given a proper ending. But it is what it is. Uh, the Last Man on Earth. I watched it on Hulu. Uh, so check it out if you're looking for something to binge. Go sign up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash inspired disorder. There you can binge the full week of the Ray Taylor show ad free. That's right. Binge all seven episodes without any ads. Do it now. Sign up, patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Other benefits include saving money on the many faces, downloading photoshops, and so many more things to come. So go sign up now. Only $3 a month, patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Also, if you're into reading, specifically reading on a Kindle, sign up for Kindle Unlimited. Get a free trial when you go through my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Kindle. That's K-I-N-D-L-E. That's where you get unlimited reading, unlimited listening on any device through Kindle. Get Kindle Unlimited when you sign up through my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Kindle. Sign up, get a free trial, get your reading on, get your audiobook listening on. It's a great service. Highly recommend it. Check it out now. InspiredDisorder.com slash Kindle. K-I-N-D-L-E. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch!